All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome um, to the fall series uh, registration webinar. Um, I am Tom Manowitz. I am the current college division manager for US Salesforce, and I'll be the college division manager until June 15th, and then someone will, will take my role. Uh, but um, I am excited to talk about what I, along with the college working group, have been putting together um, over the last year to get us ready to returning to college ultimate um, and the things that you all will need to do in order to do that. Um, so also on the screen, um, you're going to see a couple other folks uh, throughout the presentation. So uh, Dana, do you want to wave and, and quickly say hello? Um, hey. Dana is the competition coordinator at USA Ultimate headquarters. Um, so she's been working with me for a couple of years now as well on uh, the college division. And then Grace Keel is the national women's D3 director. So one of the highest level volunteers that we have in the college division um, and is part of the broader college working group. Um, the working group includes uh, directors for every um, every division and gender division in, in uh, College Ultimate. Um, and actually, I just saw uh, we have our national D1 women's director who just, uh, who just arrived as well. Um, so Beth, if you want to quickly just say hello uh, so the folks on the webinar can see who you are. Hi, everyone. I'm Beth. I'm the national women's uh, D1 college director. It's good to be here, and thank you for being here tonight. Um, so the, the college working group, there are uh, it consists of myself and the uh, five national directors. Um, and we have been putting together the guidelines and setting up the rules to get us going in the fall for the last year. Um, I think that's all we need to talk about in terms of introductions, just some ground rules for the webinar for most questions. Um, we'll take questions sort of at the end of each section and questions at the end, and we'll stay as long as we need if there are people who wanna ask us questions as we go. During the webinar, um, please just use the chat function to ask the questions at the end of each section. Uh, Dana will read out the questions and I'll answer them to the best I can or Grace or Beth, if they have answers as well, will also chime in. Um, and then uh, at the end, we'll stay as long as people wanna have questions. So if you wanna turn your camera on uh, and ask us, you know, turn your microphone on and ask us questions at the end, that way you can do that as well. Um, also feel free to turn your cameras on. I know uh, in class you don't, it's not a thing that you do. Uh, but we, you know, one of the disadvantages of uh, the job at USA Ultimate is uh, I don't get to actually see a lot of Ultimate being played. It would be nice to know what you all look like uh, as we go, but uh, you don't actually have to do that. So, um, so welcome everyone. Um, so that's who we are. Um, and because there's a lot of stuff to get into, uh, I, I want to just kind of jump in. There are three main sections uh, that we're going to talk about tonight. The eligibility rules, the guidelines, and where we're going to spend most of the time is the registration. Um, a, a lot of you are brand new to being a captain and sort of have just sort of shown up to practice and played before and probably haven't gone through any of the administrative requirements. So some of what I'll talk about is sort of our typical rules for um, the, a spring season that you would normally see. Um, I'll identify what's new in the fall and how it's different. And then most of the time we'll talk about like, what you need to be thinking about in the fall, how to register, how to get sorted, and the resources that we have to make things easier to navigate our system. Um, we know it, it, it seems a little bit cumbersome in the USA Ultimate web, uh, on the USA Ultimate website at times, but uh, we're gonna try and make it as easy as possible for you. So with that, um, we're gonna get started. So here we go. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is the eligibility rules. Um, Broadly, these are the academic and participation requirements um, that you would need to comply with in order to play. Um, typically, uh, there are, well, not typically, in, in all cases, including the fall, there are um, two types of eligibility rules to be concerned with, um, academic and the eligibility clock. Um, I'm going to quickly start with the clock. The clock is the five-year window that you have. Um, so you would basically, the way the eligibility clock works is you would have five ultimate seasons to participate once you play in a start date event. Start date events are any sanctioned college event or club regular season or series event. Those tend to be um, the, the type of events. And there are certain international events if you were to play on a national team as well that would start your clock. Um, 
but that does not apply to most uh, most participants. The other thing to note about the clock is that it is um, started by being on an event roster. It's not about if you played the event. It's not about you know if you're on the roster. That's that's the only evidence USA Ultimate has um, that you played an event. And so when you, as the team captain, are taking care of your roster, make sure they're accurate because if somebody doesn't show up to a tournament uh, and then you know they're not coming and that event could start their clock if they're a freshman and that could actually have impacts later on. So something just to keep in mind um, as you kind of go through the, the rostering process. Um, so with that start date, the other thing is it, it's about five seasons. I don't want to get too much into the details. You can read the example on the slide there. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit of what's different for the fall and spring of 22 um, because we did make some extensions uh, for COVID. Um, the last piece, the second piece is academic eligibility. Um, broadly speaking, in the spring, you need to be in a degree seeking program in at least half time. Again, there's some changes in the fall and we'll talk about that, but that is the general rule. And then the final thing is there are consortiums for some schools. Consortiums are uh, a way for USA Ultimate, USA Ultimate to recognize um, school programs that collaborate in all ways and that you know play club sports together, for example, but they might have different registrars. So classic examples of consortiums are um, the, um, uh, the Claremont schools, uh, Haverford, Bryn Mawr, um, and St. Mary's and Notre Dame. Those are sort of some classic uh, consortium examples where we, those are programs that are existed. The consortium rules are meant to recognize existing programs that work together. They're not uh, meant uh, as a way to you know, get somebody from a local community college to come play with your college team. So broadly, that's what the eligibility rules look like. Um, there's a lot more detail and we can you know, answer some questions about, about them uh, at the end of this section, but I'm gonna move to the fall. So um, the fall, there are a couple things to keep in mind. There were uh, two extensions granted during 2020. In the immediate aftermath of the cancellation of the 2020 season, the college working group uh, sort of worked to figure out what we were going to do. At that time, before we knew uh, the extent of the pandemic and we, before we knew how, how long it was going to last and affect the college season, um, we realized that those fifth year players were losing their last opportunity to participate in a college series. And for those specific academically eligible rostered fifth year players in 2020, um, we granted a one year extension. Once we learned more about the pandemic uh, in December of 2020, um, we, we knew that the college series for 2021 was going to be suspended and pushed to the fall. We granted an additional extension to everybody um, who has started their clock. So, so one thing to note is that, so if you started your clock in 2019, um, that means you have an extra year of eligibility that you otherwise would not have but for the pandemic. Um, so that uh, uh, well, you know that amounts to a sixth season for most participants. Um, for rostered fifth years in 2020, it actually could be a seventh ultimate season. Now, for your freshmen who are coming in and starting to play in the fall, that extension does not apply. Um, their clocks have not yet started. Uh, their eligibility clocks have not yet started. So think about it this way: they're going to get their full five seasons because nothing was. Uh, they did not have a season canceled. So that's just something to note. For your freshmen, you know, in 2021, they will start their clock, and it will go through, uh, you know, the five seasons in the fall. Um, so that's one thing to start. The other thing that's different for the fall, I covered this quickly, is usually you'd have to be half time in the spring. We are only requiring one class uh, and degree seeking for students participating in the fall season. The reason we are doing this, so there are a lot of current students who. Uh, had to mess with their schedules. Um, online classes weren't their thing. There's, there are all sorts of reasons. We've heard lots and lots of examples of people trying to figure out the pandemic. So we wanted to lower the barrier for the fall, uh, for the fall season. So people coming in, and this is important for team managers to know, especially with the timing of the way we do roster verification, um, you will need to make sure that every single person on your roster participating in the fall is enrolled in at least one class and in a degree seeking program. It's a pretty low bar. Most schools, especially small schools, will never have to think about it because it's required to be full-time anyway. Um, but that's, uh, those are the things you as the team captain and team manager are gonna be looking for. Um, the other change for the fall is we have created 
a graduated student exception, um, which will allow some non-students, if they graduate between April 2020 and June 2021, uh, to participate in the fall season, only if your school allows it. So just a quick note about the dates, April 21 to June 2021, April 2020 to June 2021. Um, the, there are students who were forced to graduate in the summer because of the pandemic. Um, when we drafted the rules, we actually didn't, we didn't account for those August graduations that were the result of a pandemic change. We, the college working group and the eligibility committee will be open to looking at those cases. Our, our goal is to include as many people as possible and open up participation within reasonable bounds um, of what schools will allow. So just so you know, if you do have a summer graduate, um, have them reach out to us. We'll have the context at the end of the slideshow. Um, but something that's super, some, something super important, it, it will not preclude them if they have a summer graduation potentially uh, to participate. The second piece of this is school permission. We'll talk about the how you get it and what that means later on. But just know that for graduated students to play, this goes against typical school rules in most cases. Now, a lot of schools are allowing it. We have talked to a lot of schools. We know that there's going to be um, some divergence on how it how it plays out. Um, but our, the one thing I wanna caution all team managers, the worst thing that could happen is that your club sports department sees your USA Ultimate roster with graduated students. They did not allow those graduated students to participate and represent the university and they suspend your team for the spring. Um, be very aware of that. It is not worth allowing them to play if you are going to be suspended for the spring and we wanna protect against that. And I will talk about that as we get to the registration section. Um, but school permission is very important. Now, what school permission means is gonna be a little bit liberal um, in, in some cases. Mostly what we don't want is for uh, graduated students to be prohibited from participating. There might have to be um, some workarounds in terms of how you deal with your club sports department. They might have liability requirements, um, insurance issues for you to navigate. Um, and I'll talk about that again at the registration section, but if, if uh, your school doesn't give you permission. We are gonna we are gonna side with the school and not let those those part, those athletes participate either. The other thing is linked here in this uh, webinar, and again, you'll get the links at the end. And Dana, can you send the graduated student letter link out in the chat? Um, sure. Uh, is we drafted a letter from myself and Tom Crawford, the CEO of USA Ultimate, so that you, when you go to your club sports department or your student org office. Um, you have a letter in hand from USA Ultimate so that they know that the request to allow non-student participation is real. Um, and uh, we can help work with the club sports department to the extent that they're willing. Some will not be, and you know, I'll, I'll talk about that again later on. The last thing is, is probably not going to be important for most teams, um, but we are not allowing new consortiums for the fall. Um, and that is strictly an administrative, there's administrative requirements to get a consortium approved. And given the short calendar, um, that's something we just don't have a lot of time for. So those are the big eligibility changes and the basic eligibility rules. Um, I'm gonna open it up real quick to eligibility specific questions, um, throw them in the chat, uh, give it a couple of minutes. If you have any questions there, if not, I'll move on. Um, so yeah, Dana, if you could let me know if there are any questions, uh, it'd be great. Otherwise I will, I'll move on. Uh, no questions in the chat right now, uh, okay. so. I think cool. we might be good to move on. Yeah. Sweet. All right. In that case, uh, I will move on. And if you they come up later, we'll, we'll answer them later. All right. So we talked about the eligibility rules. That's going to be one set of rules. Um, actually, Dana, can you also send links out to the both el the both sets of eligibility rules as well? So everybody has, yeah. has access to them. Um, the fall yep, and right then now. the typical spring rules um, as well. So what we just talked about is going to be one set of rules. They're on our website. Um, and they'll explain all the things we just talked about so you know where to find them. So the guidelines is the second set of rules. That's the second piece of what sort of dictates how the college season works. Um, for the fall, uh, we have a lot of new stuff and I'm gonna focus really on the fall here. You know, not explain all of the differences, but focus on the things that you should be aware of. The very first, um, yeah. It, yeah. 
Go, we yeah, did go. get a question about eligibility. Um, cool. So while Dana is posting the um, eligibility rules, it just asks uh, to clarify that graduated students don't need to be taking any classes. They just need to be um, just permission from the school, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. Um, thank you, Greg. So the graduated student is an exception to the eligibility rules allowing non-student participation in that specific case. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to the calendar. So big picture of what the calendar looks like is um, there is no regular season as there would be in a typical spring. Um, we will have conferences throughout October, uh, regionals in November, and then nationals is December 17th through 20th in sunny California. Uh, and we're very, very excited uh, to be outside of LA for that. For conferences and regionals, um, we are in the process of taking bids for those events now. We don't have them scheduled yet, so we, I can't tell you where your conference uh, is going to be, where your regionals is going to be. If you're interested in hosting, please, please, please reach out. Um, we would love to have teams hosting. I know a lot of college campuses have not made any policies about on-campus visitors yet, so we, we do not expect a lot of these events to be on college campuses. Um, and if they are, they'll be scheduled later. Um, but it's something to be thinking about if your team, you know your team usually hosts conferences or regionals, um, something to talk to your club sports department about now and, and ask and try and see what's possible. The other deadlines are at the top of the slide. Um, and these are the most important things. So um, they are, the deadlines are gonna come up very fast in the fall. Um, and let me tell you about what these deadlines are. The first one is the sign up deadline. Pretty simple deadline. You just need to go into your uh, USA Ultimate Team Manager account, sign your team up for uh, your conference championship. All that means is you click, you select your right conference championship uh, on the USA Ultimate website. They're not up there yet. They will be uh, at the beginning of June. Uh, beginning to mid June is when they'll be up on the website. Um, and sign your team up. Um, that's it. That deadline is very important for reasons I'll talk about later. But know that, you know, for September 24th, that's early on in the semester. When you think about it over a normal spring season, our, our regular season starts on January 1st, and we wouldn't have the conference sign up deadline until the very last day of March or the last day of the regular season. So just three weeks into the school year for some schools and maybe even the first day of school for others um, is the conference sign up deadline. It means your team itself needs to be signed up. You do not need your roster set yet at that time. Um, however, and this is something again, I'll talk about later is when you're, you do not, you could set your start setting your team up and getting ready now. Um, and so that's the type of thing that you should as a team, team manager should be thinking about. Then the roster deadline is a separate deadline. This is the roster verification deadline. Um, this year, uh, it is September 29th for the fall. That is when the uh, verified roster that is sort of approved and signed off on by your school, we'll talk about how later, um, is sent to USA Ultimate. Um, so it can be looked at and we know that all of your athletes are academically eligible. That's what that roster deadline is. Um, that deadline will also be the deadline for the graduated student form that all teams will have to fill out. I'll talk about that later. A um, couple big things to know that are that are really important that are that are some are different, some are not. For your roster, um, I'm going to start with the last one, A, B, X, Y. Um, you can do whatever you want with your teams in the fall. However, you decide that your program wants to treat the fall, you have the flexibility to do that. In the spring, typically, we do not allow XY teams. We do allow AB, of course, but we don't allow XY teams where teams are split. Um, and that is a function of the rankings. There are no rankings this fall. Um, we're just going straight to the series. So there's no reason not to have XY teams. But once your rosters are set for conferences, once somebody is on a roster and they play for a team, that's it. They cannot switch even within a school. So let's say you go XY for conferences, Y, makes it to regionals, but X does not. Your players on X cannot then go and play for Y. That is not allowed. So know that the team that starts is the team that finishes the series. All right. Um, I'm going to keep going there. Um, I'm going to keep going there, and we'll save questions on guidelines for the end of, end of the section. So um, conference assignment and pathway. 
this is a small item that only applies to D3 schools. Um, there aren't a lot of schools that choose the, D, the division one route as a D3 school anymore. Um, if you are one of those schools that's considered trying to play up, that means you would play through your D3 conference championship uh, in order to qualify for D1. Um, if you're interested in that, reach out and we can tell you the specifics if you don't know about that. Um, but I don't want to get too much into the details now. Um, uniforms, going to touch on very quickly. Uh, they are not, the uniform requirements that are in the guidelines are pretty detailed. That is required for nationals. For regionals and below, your team just needs to wear the same color when playing another team. That's just something to know. However, if you think your team is going to nationals or fighting for nationals, we are going to have stringent uniform requirements at nationals. So start thinking about the uniform purchase process early so you could be prepared for that if you're one of those teams buying for a national spot. You can check the guidelines for what the requirements are in terms of numbers and, and things like that. Um, okay. Bid allocation and regional scaling. Again, you can read the guidelines to see what they mean, but uh, broadly speaking, um, the size of regionals is determined by the amount of teams that register for conferences. Um, there is a basically a scaling section of the guidelines that will tell you how many teams registered in your region will mean what size your regionals is. And then there's bid allocation. So there's, uh, I'm gonna start, from the conferences to regional. So bid allocation, what that means is how many spots from your conference tournament are there to regional. So you need to finish in the top three, top four, top X, whatever that number is in order to advance to the next round. Those bids are being determined on a proportional size basis in the fall. Typically, it, what you're, if you've played a spring season, what you would be used to is the rankings, determining who the best teams are, and then those teams that earn bids from their conference to region. Without rankings, we needed to go another way to do that. And so the way we're, the way we're doing that is based on size. So bigger conferences are going to have more bids to regionals. This is how it used to happen way back in 2009 before, uh, before USA Ultimate existed as it, as it currently does, and it was the Ultimate Players Association. But just know that that is how bids to regionals are going to be determined, the size of the conference. Now, the size of the region is also gonna determine six bids to national. So there will be six national size, size bids for national. For D3, where there are only gonna be 16 teams at nationals, that means there are gonna be 10 automatic bids. Every single region will get one bid. And then there will be six size bids to nationals, again, determined proportionately. Um, there will be no strength bids. For D1, um, and this is, pretty much already been determined of who those uh, those uh, regions are. Strength bids are determined based on a three-year weighted average of 2019, 2018, and 2017 of who earned bids to, to nationals. We basically, as the college working group, tried to find a balance of encouraging participation, but recognizing competitive differences. Um, there is an ulti-world article out, and in the, the guidelines will soon have all of the regions listed who get those strength bids. Um, I don't know them offhand. Uh, I'll try and find that link before the end of this slideshow or uh, before the end of this presentation. Um, but uh, at the very least, it will come, it will, those, the, the, the regions that have earned those uh, strength bids, they will be listed in the guidelines uh, shortly. Um, so I've just gone through a lot of stuff pretty quickly because I want to get to the meat of this presentation, which is what you all probably care about most, and that is that is registration. Um, but before we move on, are there any any questions uh, on guidelines? I'm not seeing any questions posted directly in the chat. Oh, actually, Shannon just shared. Just to double check, the rosters for fall are separate from the rosters in the spring? Yes, that's correct. Um, there will be basically two opportunities to go through the, the rostering process, one in the fall, one in the spring, so completely separate. And then we have a question from Leah. What does the extension look like for UCs? Uh, so, is, so Leah, just to just to clarify, I'm assuming that means like you, your school starts later, um, and you're not going to basically start classes by the time the deadlines come along. Is that is that correct? Is that a fair assumption? She said right. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So what you will do is 
of course, we are going to give you the time necessary to get your roster in. So um, this isn't that different from a typical spring where there, there are extensions, but the timelines are going to be shorter. Um, for each school, it's going to look a different. It look different. It depends on when your school starts and when your registration closes, such that your registrar can verify your classes. Um, the in those cases, it's going to be important for team managers to understand the eligibility rules even more because events could happen before the registration process is finished for you all. But the short answer is what you'll need to know is reach out to the college division manager as early as possible as a team that needs an extension um, and let them know. So even before you get to school, reach out and email the college manager. Again, uh, sadly, it will not be me as I'm, I'm leaving in June, uh, but it, there will be a new college manager who uh, reach out to that person and um, let them know you need an extension and they'll help work with you through the process to, to get that extension. Um, it's going to be on a case by case basis, but we will definitely work with your school. Uh, that's true for all UC schools. I know that's true for a lot of big schools in the West Coast, Oregon, Washington. Um, so if that's you, have no fear, you will have the opportunity to get an extension. Great. And that looks like all the questions for right now, if you want to move into registration. Awesome. Um, thanks, Anne. So registration. Um, links there, and Dana, can you share the link if, if, if people can't click into it? Um, is going to be um, the link to the USA Ultimate help documents that can help you with the standard registration stuff on creating a team in, in the USA Ultimate system, rolling it over event registration and then event rosters. Um, that link is super helpful. Um, it is the basic stuff. You need to have a team that exists in the system. And most importantly, and is this is the type of stuff that you can do right now as a team manager to get yourself uh, ready for the fall. In fact, we highly encourage you, the earlier you get a team built in the system that has the correct contact information for your team, the more likely you're going to get timely communication from USA Ultimate headquarters and the volunteers who are helping to set up your conference championship and regional championship events. And they're gonna give you more information as it gets closer. That information is going to include bid, bid fees, the location of the events, um, all the things you need to do to register with the tournament director. So the sooner you get yourself signed up in our system in USA Ultimate for 2021, you've all probably had teams that were signed up for 2020 or 2019, um, the better. Those 2020 and 2019 teams can be rolled over so that it still includes those rosters from 2020. Um, and there are instructions on that team manager page on how to do that. Um, the one thing to note for, especially for new captains, there's basically going to be two rosters that you deal with. There's the team personnel page. That team personnel is everybody who could possibly attend an event for your team. That team personnel page is what's going to get verified by your registrar. That team personnel page is who needs to be confirmed as academically eligible. And then there's the event roster. That is who actually signs up and plays the event. You'll have until the Wednesday before your conference championship to set that roster. Um, for the event roster, for start date stuff, for anything that goes through the series, we use the event roster. So your team personnel page manners as a team manager for your administration purposes and to make sure you have everybody. But what really matters to USA Ultimate and who we count as playing is the event roster. So. Just, just know that there's a distinction there. The team manager help documents do a great job of sort of describing that difference. Um, but it's, uh, it's an important detail that sometimes gets confused um, as the, as uh, it gets confused by team managers all the time. And so we have to help fix some issues, uh, usually towards the beginning of the regular season. All right, dues and waivers. Um, you do not need to be a member and to be on a team personnel page, you do need to be a member to be on an event roster, which means dues and waivers do not need to be paid until the Wednesday before your first conference championship event. Uh, I recommend though, getting them done ASAP. So you as a team manager are not scrambling at 10 p.m. on Wednesday, October, uh, October 7th, I think it is, uh, to get your stuff in order. Uh, at 
late at night on that Wednesday, somebody from USA Ultimate is not going to be available by phone to help fix the problem. Um, so the sooner you get dues and waivers done, the better. For teams that are just trying to build their teams, right? That might be even harder. It means being more organized in advance. Um, again, if there are issues, reach out to the college manager. We The HQ will work through them with you. Um, not going to go into chaperones, but if you end up having a minor on your team, so someone who's under the age of 18, you will need a chaperone. There are chaperone requirements. Um, those are laid out on the USA Ultimate website. does not apply to most teams, uh, uh, but every once in a while, there is a 17-year-old on a college roster. So know that that's there. I'm going to move on. So I just talked a lot about the basics, and now I'm going to come back to those things that I had mentioned uh, previously. The conference sign-up deadline, September 24th. I went to, into this in detail. Um, it's in that team manager's link. There's a link to signing up for events. Um, I won't get more into the conference sign-up deadline. That's fairly simple. Now the roster deadline. So the roster deadline um, and the roster verification process. Um, there is a link. We just put out a new help document. And Dana, can you send the link out for the the how-to on printing out your registrar verified roster. Um, I'm gonna start there and then come back to the graduated student form. So there are a couple things. The registrar's, the verified roster is a piece of paper that you print from the USA Ultimate website. It has your entire team personnel page listed. Um, it's gonna have a cover page with some USA Ultimate stuff. It's gonna have some instructions. Uh, you have your team listed and it'll have instructions for your school registrar. Um, you will print that out. You will bring it to your club sports department. You will bring it to your registrar. You will have them sign off on it. Um, they will verify who's who is who. And then a school official will then, we are asking school officials to email that form to college rosters at usaultimate.org. There are some schools that won't send anything on your behalf. In that case, reach out to USA Ultimate. That's the minority of schools. Um, we will not accept rosters that come from team, well, any athlete on a team, any student, we will not accept a roster if you email it. We used to do it, and this is the very first time that we are doing it digitally. Um, many of you might, ha might have already experienced going through the mail process uh, for the rosters where we take hard, hard original rosters to verify authenticity. With emails, it is harder to verify authenticity and sort of root out fraud. So we are requiring that the emails come from the school. So if the school won't email, reach out to USA Ultimate. We will give you the instructions to mail it. We will probably require a scanned copy by email first and then mail to follow. Um, if the school won't use the USA Ultimate form, a lot of schools, uh, uh, I, the, the examples that come, off, come to mind, like Stanford, Texas, um, there are some others, University of Maryland, Connecticut, some of those schools like that I'm just listing, I, they do not use the USA Ultimate forms. Instead, what they will have you do is print out uh, enrollment verification forms. They're either unique to your school or they're through the National Clearinghouse. Um, you will get those for every, every single person on your team personnel page and you will email those to USA Ultimate. We will accept email uh, verification forms. Uh, we will not accept, accept uh, rosters verified by your registrar emailed by a team manager so just just know so again instructions are on the website um the link is there the graduated student form um and it's not linked in the in the web in the presentation so dana if you want to send that link now the um the graduated student form is something for all students to fill out if you don't have any graduated students let's say your school will not allow graduated students to participate that's okay um, it's, that means the form is going to be very short for you. You're just going to have to fill out some information, say you're not playing with graduated students, and that's it. The reason why we're having all teams fill out the form um, is because publicly, where we list roster status, we're also going to list whether or not your team is playing with graduated students. Um, during the series itself, it's, you know, we rely on teams to comply with eligibility by sort of checking against each other. And so a team that is playing against you is going to want to know if a graduated student is playing or not. And we want that information. We want to be absolutely assured of that information. Um, we cannot do that just based on the registrar verification form alone. Um, 
if you do have graduated students and your registrar or club sports department will not verify them, but they will allow them to play, that graduated student form also has a mechanism uh, to get those players verified by USAL. Um, so that form is sort of all encompassing. It is brand new. It is only for the fall. Um, that is the same deadline as the rest of the roster deadline, September 29th. Um, it should be fairly self-explanatory, but that is going to be part of your registration process, is that graduated student form for the fall. So big picture. Again, there are going to be a lot of steps to this registration process. They're not that complicated. They're all connected. But the three big ones are getting signed up online, the team set up, getting your registrar verified roster, uh, verified and sent to USA Ultimate, filling out the graduated student form, and then signing up for your conference championship and setting the event roster. So I guess that's four, not three. Uh, counting, is, counting is tough sometimes. Um, so um, those, that is the big, that's the big picture with registration. I've just went through a lot of information. So before I actually get to the thank you and, and questions, does anyone have any registration specific questions that they wanna talk about now? You can save them for the end if you'd rather um, you know, turn your microphone off and talk to us one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's cool too, if it's a very specific question to your team. Uh, but uh, let's stop here. And if there are any questions, I'll, we'll take the time. Otherwise we'll, we'll get to the end. Uh, no questions right now in the chat. Uh, it may be that people are also kind of sitting with the information for a minute. Cool. So, so. Yeah. yeah, one question. Um, are the roster caps the same? Okay, so uh, roster caps. Do you mean by the total amount of players you can have on the team? I'm assuming yes. Is that is that the question? Yes. Okay. So for roster caps in college, there is no roster maximum. Um, you can have as many players on your team as you want in college. In club, it's 27, so a lot of people assume that's true in college. Um, that is, there are, there are a lot of reasons for that, um, you know, the, the, but we do not want to restrict who, you can, who can participate in college. So you can have a team as big as 45 people in college. There are roster minimums. You must have 10 people registered for the event to participate in the series. And actually at the event, you must start with seven. So the first game, first point, there must be seven people on the line for your team but 10 need to be registered. Yeah, club, it's actually 26 now. That's one of the new, one of the changes. I'm learning something new every day. It's 26. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, that looks like it for questions in the chat, but if people have more, obviously keep putting them in there and we'll, yep. we'll circle back to them. Okay, cool. All right. So um, a couple things that we want to end on, and then we'll, we'll stick around for as long as people need to make sure their questions are answered. Um, the rules of ultimate, they're linked there. Um, one thing that goes that people have kind of might have forgotten uh, is that, and, and maybe, maybe not forgotten or just sort of neglected, is that in 2020, before the pandemic hit, um, we actually, USA Ultimate re actually released a whole new version of the rules of ultimate, the 2020, uh, 2020 rules. Um, those are brand new, and it is important to know the rules of the game before you start playing Ultimate. Um, I strongly recommend getting your teams kind of used to the rules early on uh, before the series starts. On that link, um, and if you want to send the resources link, Dana, there's actually a great brand new rules quiz that USA Ultimate put out that you could send to your team uh, so that they start like thinking about the rules. Um, that's on our website. Um, so I, I would strongly recommend using that uh, as sort of a resource just to start thinking about the rules, reading the rules before you start playing in the fall. I hope you all play club this summer and, you know, get a chance to play with the new rules as well. Um, but it, it's just something that, you know, as we get back to playing, there are a lot of things that people are going to forget. And the rules are an important part of the game and don't want people to forget them. Um, there are a couple other things that, that we want to talk about is, and, and I'm going to kick it over to Beth. Um, the National D1 Women's Director, uh, who has been around the college division uh, for a long time. And uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it to Beth. Awesome, thanks, Tom. Um, and so on behalf of the um, college working group that includes uh, the five uh, national directors as well as a college eligibility chair, we just wanted to remind you um, 
that as we return to Ultimate and as we embark on this really awesome new once in a lifetime fall series for the college division that we worked really hard over the last 15 months uh, with these three tenants in mind, um, participation and community and understanding. Um, the extension of allowing graduate students to participate in the fall series was so important to us because we realized how much uh, those um, student athletes had lost uh, in 2020 and all of a sudden. So um, we are trying, uh, we are doing our best uh, this fall to maximize participation. And that means that, you know, if your school is allowing you to allow your graduated players to play with you, that is such a great opportunity for everyone to come together one last time before we return to what we would call the normal spring college season. So um, again, keep that in mind that we extended those rules and created these eligibility guidelines with participation in mind. Um, the second part is community and that we, as we, we are very much aware about how much you have all uh, been challenged by creating community and the ultimate community is such a great supporting place. And so with that in mind, um, everyone's going to be experiencing different things with their different administrators as they return back to school and want to participate in this series. And so as you work with your club sport administrators and your school administrators and getting your rosters verified and, you know, you know, hope, possibly hosting one of these tournaments, just keep in mind that the community, like we need our community to support us so we can get back to doing what we've done and how we've done them over the last, you know, over, over the last many, many years in the college division. And this community is such a spark plug to the USA Ultimate community as a whole. Um, and, you know, we love showcasing what you do. So please keep that in mind as you start to, you know, you may hit roadblocks along the way, you may hit a bunch of no's, from, from your administrators, but know that they are looking out for you in their best light, that maybe this might not be the right time to really you know, get into an argument with them, but to also work to negotiate and cultivate relationships so that the community is stronger when it comes back in the spring. Um, and finally, as, as Tom alluded to, uh, this digital roster verification uh, process is brand new. Um, and we ask on behalf of, you know, our, our team at U.S. Ultimate Headquarters that there's a little bit of understanding and patience as you submit your rosters, as you ask your questions. Um, the college division um, at headquarters, as well as within the, the working group, are, are going to be going through a lot of transitions over the summer. Um, so we ask that you uh, give us a little bit of understanding because we will do the same. As Tom alluded to, School's going to be starting fast and furiously for, for all of you in the next coming months. And we know that our timelines and our deadlines are a little bit er earlier than they usually are, but this is to guarantee, this is to hopefully guarantee that we are able to maximize participation and really cultivate the community that's coming back to playing college ultimate. So if you can, we promise to give you some grace as you navigate your way through the membership portal and restart your, you know, restart your teams, roll over your teams, you know, nitpick your way through all the different processes because we know it's been a while since everyone's done it, but also please give us a little bit of patience and understanding as we, as it's going to be very, very busy at headquarters, as well as um, in the conversations around eligibility to ensure that we can get the most uh, number of players back out on the fields this fall. And um, with that, I'll hand it back off to Tom. Yeah, thanks, Beth. Yeah, I, I, I just want to reiterate that point. I mean, I, like, uh, Beth, has, Beth and the college working group have seen everything like far, far beyond what I have seen in the division for the past year, five years. And we know that things go wrong in any normal season. So in a new season, um, in a new season with new rules, things are going to go wrong. Um, and so we'd appreciate your understanding. So I, I really want to echo that point from that. Um, so with that, you have our contact information here. Um, we want to make sure you have everything you need to get ready for the fall as early as possible and start thinking about it now. Um, so if anyone has any other questions, now is the time. We'll stick around. I'm going to stop uh, the recording of the webinar right now. So. You don't want to be recorded, that kind of thing. Um, just let us know if you have questions. I, I hope this was helpful. Um, well, again, we'll be putting this on YouTube and getting the slides out. Um, and there will be a lot more communication 
especially if you sign your team up for the USA Ultimate website, you will get more communication on what needs to be done and when. Um, and yeah, start thinking about this stuff before school starts. Um, because if you don't, you'll be behind the eight ball in it and it's going to be tough for everybody. But that's it. And thank you all. So feel free to stick around. We'll, we'll answer some questions.